paper here. So uh, I have been working on a new series of videos that I want to share with you guys and uh, they're going to be different from what I usually do. It's not going to be about like high calibers, confederates, krakens, 4000 XP, stuff like that. Uh, this series here is simply going to be called Solid Cruiser Play. And uh, I'm going to start out with the German cruisers. Um, and then please let me know in the comments what you think about uh, the first video here and um, like if, it's, if it helps you. Because the whole point of these videos um, are to show battles that are more average. Like something that you can expect if you just fire up your Xbox and play for like 10 minutes or something. Um, so uh, hopefully you like it and uh, like I said, let me know what you think. So uh, let's just jump into the first one here. All right, let's just jump straight into the video here. And as you can see, I am playing Siegfried in this battle here. And uh, it's a German cruiser, obviously, German heavy cruiser. And uh, it comes with sonar, heels, and spotter planes. So uh, I always say when you play these uh, higher tier German cruisers with 5.6 or 5. Point whatever uh, sonar, like you should make use of that sonar. And um, that's what I'm going to do in this battle here. I'm going to go like slightly on the right flank. Uh, so I get within range, at least of the cap. And if I can push any more than that, I will. Uh, but the most important thing is that I can uh, hopefully get to sonar the whole cap while still staying in a relatively safe position here. And uh, I'm not using an agile build on the ship here because uh, it's just too big and heavy for that to make sense. So I'm going with a very traditional Müller build here uh, with uh, the Italian guy and the Russian guy. And it's all about uh, damage and range and reload, please. So, uh, you know, a fully uh, what some people call offensive build um, on the ship aiming systems and uh, rudder and concealment and reload. And we only have two sonars, which is a little bit of a problem, actually. Um, you can, you know, switch to uh, fully packed. If you would like to have three, I sometimes do that, and I probably should have done that for this video, uh, but I didn't. Um, so uh, you'll just have to, you know, make up your own mind. So uh, first things first, look at the composition of the team. You can see there are three destroyers in this battle here, and um, that means that you are absolutely certain there's going to be at least one destroyer here, or you're not absolutely certain, but you quite certain that there's going to be a minimum of one destroyer at each cap and uh, this uh, Ganja guy here, Ganja, mother Ganja here, he uh, isn't afraid at all, he's just shooting away and you know plowing his way into the cap and uh, I mean yeah um, I guess that's one way of doing it but uh, I'm expecting him to go dark at any second that's why I'm not switching to HE because uh, like always happens as soon as you switch to HE you get a perfect broadside so that's why I'm like insisting on staying with AP, but then in the end, I think, okay, this guy is not uh, running away, don't know what he's up to, so I switched to HE. So, uh, okay, this first destroyer here, very lucky, and also uh, not the best play by that destroyer player, I will say that. But uh, just ignore that guy and, you know, focus on the kid here, because he's playing more like a normal destroyer guy would do. Gets into the cap, smokes up, and then tries to cap. But uh, he's well within my sonar range here, almost uh, more than a kilometer. So uh, it's going to be very, very hard for him to disengage. So uh, I'm trying to line up a shot here so I can uh, help get him out of the way. Because uh, my team are shooting at him, which is wonderful. Always do that. Especially when a cruiser goes out on a limb to try to sonar destroyers for you. Um, then it makes sense to, you know, reward the effort. And it does get rewarded here because we've taken out two destroyers now very, very quickly in the first like two minutes of the match here. And uh, that means this flank here is pretty safe. All right, so uh, next up is the Bismarck here. And uh, like I said, these videos here are going to be average games. They're not going to be fantastic. They're also not going to be terrible. You know, they're going to be around two, two and a half thousand XP for a win, something like that. Uh, that's usually, you know, a pretty good average battle, a little bit more than good, you know, probably slightly great. But anyway, um, the point here is that, of course, there's going to be some potatoes in these videos here, because usually I filter out the videos that have, like, terrible red teams that where you just 
you know, totally steamroll them because nobody wants nobody wants to watch that. I mean, there has to be a little bit of uh, resistance. <laughs> so I waited just a little bit too long to get that kill there. But whatever, we are moving on. Uh, so like I said, just bear with the potato uh, reds and blues. They are going to be in these videos and uh, that's just, you know, part of an average battle really. So uh, we have cleaned up this flank over here really, really nicely. Uh, we had have lost the destroyer though, don't really know how that happened, but uh, gone he is. So I'm going to head in and cap uh, here in my uh, Siegfried, and that's relatively safe because there's no one over here really, everyone's gathered over at A. So uh, our team over at A have successfully kept the Reds from capping, which is really good, we're almost 5 minutes into the, uh, the battle here, and uh, I mean they're not outnumbered, they are by one ship, but uh, it's not like they are totally uh, getting overrun over there. So that's a good thing they've been doing. They've been holding the cap, not allowing the Reds to take it, and that gives us enough time over here on the sea flank, which we have just you know steamrolled, uh, to approach the middle of the map to be able to back them up over at A. And I mean, this is just so important in this game here. Uh, after you win your flank, you have to move uh, towards whatever flank is struggling. Uh, so you can get those broadsides, like here, and get cheated out of one here. Um, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm just waiting to cap here, and then I'm going to uh, try to take care of this Roma here, because uh, he's pretty much owning the whole middle of the map, and uh, we can't really, we can't have that. So uh, here I get a little bit surprised, because I forget I don't have Ingenious on this ship here, so I wasn't really expecting that Salvo there. I didn't think he was aiming at me. But obviously he was, I just didn't know, because I don't have that perk on this build. So uh, I should probably, you know, reveal why I'm doing this video is here. And uh, it's mainly because I see quite a bit of cruiser players not really playing their ships to their fullest. Or uh, they are staying so far away from the battle that they're, like, they're, just, they're just doing damage. And... Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, especially if you're in a Cleveland or a Mogami or something like that, where, you know, your whole kind of thing is uh, being a DPM cruiser. But uh, if you're in a little bit more versatile cruiser, now we're just going to remove this Roma here. ka uh, If you're in a more versatile cruiser like a Siegfried, uh, like a Wichita, like a Baltimore, like a Des Moines, a uh, Hippo, uh, even a Targo also counts. Uh, damage is not your uh, primary objective. Your primary objective is to protect destroyers and hunt down enemy destroyers, and that's about it. And uh, like I said in the beginning, that 5.6 or 5. Point whatever uh, sonar you get on these German cruisers here, it's so valuable. And I see so many German cruisers sitting far away from the cap and uh, not using that sonar, and uh, that's just a waste. Because why are you playing the German cruisers and then play a uh, play a Cleveland um, or something if you want to sit far away? Uh, at least the Cleveland has a radar as well. And uh, German cruisers, they are they're not made for yoloing, although you can do that if you want to. But like, it's not really the best strategy in any ship that is. And I'm just again cheated out of a kill here. I didn't deserve that kill either, but I mean. You see a low health battleship, you're gonna go for it. <laughs> so, like I was saying, in domination battles, German cruisers are really powerful because as soon as you get within five, six kilometers of the cap and you can find like a relatively safe place to drop your anchor, uh, you're going to be a real pain in the side for the enemy team, especially if you're in uh, a ship like Hipper or Mainz, or Prince Eugen, uh, also Siegfried to a certain degree, because Siegfried also has torpedoes, but those other ships have way more, way more torpedoes than Siegfried has, and, you know, pushing into a Hibba, or a Prince Eugen that's in cover, and, you know, controlling and cap, that's a really bad idea, no matter who you are, uh, especially when they have that 5.6 kilometer sonar, so there's no way you can sneak in on them either. And uh, that's really the secret to German cruiser play, uh, German high level, high tier cruiser play. Um, it is get in there, get into a very, very good spot. Uh, probably 
behind an island, but at the same time, uh, you're able to actually fire on the enemy just like I did in the beginning here. If you just sit behind an island in cover, but you're not able to do anything, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, we are totally nailing this team here, and um, I'm kind of hoping I can get the kill shot on the Nagato here, because uh, I'm at two, and I'm thinking, oh, I should at least get three kills here, and that's that's actually a little bit more than you get in an average battle. I get one or two in an average battle. Uh, so perhaps this battle here is a little bit mm, little bit too good, actually, to call an average battle. Uh, but I just I just wanted to pick the secret here because I just played this battle here. And um, I think that I don't have a lot of secret videos and people like the ship. And uh, every secret I see, well, almost every secret I see, is played like a battleship from the back line sniping or something like that, which is just, if you ask me, that's totally wrong. Totally a waste of the whole point of the ship. Um, so anyway, so uh, we're facing a battleship and two cruisers here. Uh, the battleship is a tier six, so don't really worry about that at all. There is a Cleveland, which could be kind of a problem. And uh, the Sarah is not that much of an issue either. So I'm just trying to stagger my shots here so I can uh, try to remove him from the map quite quickly. And uh, so I can, you know, allow myself to focus on the Cleveland, which is a much uh, more dangerous ship and uh, like really a much more important target. Not really now because he's the only ship left and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but uh, if you're, you know, facing three or four ships in a situation like this, I would probably go for the Cleveland first um, simply because... Like I said in the beginning, like the damage output from this cruiser is just horrendous, and uh, you know the quicker you can get rid of it, uh, the less of your battleships on your team will panic, and uh, that's good for you. So uh, target number one, pretty much. So uh, here is the famous secret dispersion because that was a perfect broadside, and I aimed exactly where I should, and I staggered my shots, and still I get absolutely silch for it. Um, but. This could very well have been a Kraken battle, but uh, it isn't, as you can tell. But uh, we still did really well, and I think we played the secret uh, the way that I recommend it should be played. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this new sort of video here, and uh, I'll see you out there.